Hi guys, it is Chris, back in my cider shed with another cider to try, as always. And what is it today? Loads of samples, basically. Everything I'm doing at the moment is basically samples. Uh, except for the one I did yesterday, which was the didgeridoo, which I actually have got that to sell. In very small quantities, but I do have it to sell. Uh, everything else is just, I'm just going sample crazy at the moment, because I'm mean, locked in the house, I'm shoulder surgery, can't do much, so I thought, well, I'd use the time to try and try some new ciders, find some new producers, that's exactly what I'm doing. So this one is from Newton Court Cider. I feel like I've had some from these guys before, but the label was different. I feel like they've made the label look a bit more contemporary. Actually, I like it. It's a nice label, actually. Very nice. Kind of simple. I like that. Simple is good. Less is more. Um, so this one's called Gasping Goose. So Newton Court, cider maker's called Paul. I can't remember his second name. Uh, Newton Court is on like a large organic farm. Um, it's where they sort of up. They've got 30 acres of apples on that farm to organic apples and they also source of locally still in Lempster, Herefordshire, to where they're located. Um, so yeah, so they're getting good fruit, doing everything by hand, doing everything with wild yeast, using traditional varietals, etc. What does it say on the back of this organic gasping goose cider? Um, it says, made from a blend of classic cider apple varieties such as Yarlington Mill, Dabada and Harry Masters Jersey. Gasping goose is easy to drink with a Moorish quality, perfect for every occasion. Taste. This slightly sparkling, 100% fresh pressed cider is an earthy, woody and fruit is earthy, woody and fruity with a long, smooth finish to round things off. And it has a little thing there which tells you sharpness, tannin, and sweet. And I'll put it in there. You go. Sharp, tannin, sweet. It's got a little uh, little image there to tell you what it is. All around about low, low to middling, I would say. Let's crack it. Let's crack it. Where's my glass? There's my glass. Here's my glass. Right, got some few bits of cheese in as well at the moment, so I'm going to have to bring some down. But it's so, I love my shed, but it's cold in here and it is damp in here at the moment. And it's not that much fun coming down the shed when this sort of weather, I have to say. But things will hopefully get better sooner rather than later, weather-wise. So, carbonated, there's a slight fizz there. Little tiny sparkle, can't see through this with brown bottles, so I'll have to pour it out to see what it looks like. Are you ready? Let's go. So, Yarlington Dabbit at Yarlington Mill. Nice. Yarlington Mill Dabonet Harry Masters Jersey, pardon me. So Harry Masters discovered Harry Masters Jersey and he also discovered Yarlington Mill. Uh, the mill in Yarlington, in Somerset. Fact. Okay, so, we've got one man to thank for those two varietals. So, bright, don't know if it's, when, don't know if it's filtered. Sometimes I've said they're, they're filtered when they haven't been, but they've been really bright. So that is really bright indeed. Quite a nice deep gold that, isn't it? Very, very pretty thing. Um, no head, but decent sparkle. Let's give it a sniff. Mm, nice, kind of fresh apple, round apple. There's like a there's like a hint of funkiness to it. Almost like a subtle pastry dairy character there in the background as well, which makes it feel quite round, which I like. I must say. Yeah, there's a merest hint of funk, which I always like that. I always like that. And there's a fresh apple character there as well. Yeah. Quite a full nose. It's got freshness, but it's got richness to it as well. So it's like a rounded, soft down and that sort of dairy pastry thing. Let's taste it. So yeah, tannins are so there. They are quite delicate. I think two, I was going to say two stars. Two diamonds, two triangles, two diamonds, triangles, not triangles, two squares, two diamonds, something like that, whatever it is. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Sharp. Not that sharp. Um, I think it could be a little sharp at the balance of sweetness, but I've got sweet tooth, so that doesn't bother me with some people. I would say it feels, in terms of the sharpness and the sweetness, a bit like a traditional French keepsider, actually, in terms of the, the levels, if you like. It's a nice, tasty sort of honeyed apple character though, ripe, rich red apple character. You know, it's sugar, like it's been like, just um, sorted in some sugar and some butter or something like that, which makes you think of. Um, okay, reasonable tannins. There's a little hint of funk in there, which I like. And I mean like a volcanic sulfurous kind of funk. No, I don't mean like a horrible eggy smell, it's just there's something, it, I like that characteristic. I get it quite a lot in Ross and Weiss stuff as well, which I like. So yeah, it's good. It's quite sweet. So yeah, 
quite easy drinking, but I couldn't get on with it. It reminds me a bit of the Gotkins, but without the acidity. That's what it's making me think now. If I had more acidity, it would make me feel like the Gotkins original blend. What is the ABV actually? Didn't see that, did I? Uh, 5.8. Eh, about right. 5.8 is not bad. Around the six marks, pretty much normal. But like, instead of this fermented to dried and being back sweet, now they seem that they're fermented. 5.8, maybe they didn't. Maybe they racked off. Don't know. Not a lot of it. Maybe they racked off to stop the fermentation. It's possible. Uh, which would retain some sweetness. Possible. Possible. Don't know. Okay. Maybe they'll watch and they'll tell me. Hello, if you're watching, tell me. Right. So, what do we think of it? I like it. It's nice. It's sweet, but it's not sickly sweet, cloyingly sweet. It's a nice balanced sweetness. It's got a little bit of tannin, which I like. It's very drinkable. It's also pretty cold, but you know they always are cold in the shed at the moment. I feel like the thing that I think I'd like to change the most is the uh, carbonation. I think a little less carbonation. It's a little too prickly, which masks flavour. Just like a little softer, a little bit subtler would be really good. I think uh, the um, which is the Kingston Black from Temple Side I had the other day, and that had. I mean, the carbonation was minimal, but brilliant. It's just brilliant. It's just, just, just there. I, I, I really liked it. It was great. It was enough to, to, to sort of excite your tongue, but not so much to mask flavour. Uh, this I can still feel on my tongue a little bit. So, it, so it's a while since I had a sip. So that tells you something. All right, guys. So there you go. I've got a few from these guys to try. Some large format corked bottles as well, a Perry and a dry cider. Really looking forward to those, but I thought I'd start with these little boys first. Little girls first. Little bottles first. Little things first. Uh, yeah. So there you go. There you go. Let's see how we go. Not a bad start, though. Not a bad start. Okay, guys, once again, thank you, as always, for joining me in the shed. I hope to see you again. And until then, cheers.